Hey, it's Tony and Jenny Bruski from Real Ghost Stories Online. You know, we love doing this show for you every single week, but doing the show is not free. So if you enjoy the show, we ask maybe you uh, consider helping us out a bit and supporting it. You can do that by becoming an EPP at realghoststoriesonline.com. EPP means extra podcast person. You get an extra podcast for your support of the show. Every single week, we send you a brand new one. And you get access to our past archive of EPP episodes as well. Right now, that's more than 15 bonus episodes along with the weekly episode that you'll be getting every single week for only five bucks a month. If you like the show, help keep us on the air. And become an EPP at realghoststoriesonline.com today. And thank you. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Today, can someone hold a grudge even in death? We hear the story that will make you question if the hatchet can truly ever be buried after a sudden death the father returns to comfort and say goodbye to his wife and daughters and could it be ghost children that haunt a new york apartment and is it their desire to participate in halloween celebrations the reason for their return some giggly girls in a camp out are told to quiet down from a mysterious whisper within the tent. Those stories, your calls, and more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Tony and Jenny Bruski joining you once again. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm ready to hear some ghost stories. I am too. And uh, I should remind everyone that uh, tomorrow, EPP bonus episode number... We're up to 22. 22. 22 shall be released. So EPPs, I hope you're looking forward to that. We got a good story, uh, stories uh, in store for you there. And if you're not an EPP yet, please sign up. Uh, if you want a little taste of what uh, some of the EPP uh, episodes have been about, you can read about them up on the website at realghoststoriesonline.com. Uh, there's even some uh, audio synopsis uh, on our iTunes feed of some of the past shows. So uh, please uh, do become an EPP. You keep our show alive and on the air, and you can uh, enjoy some really, uh, really good uh, extra ghost stories that we uh, we share with every single week. Our phone number is 855-853-4802 to call in a real ghost story. Uh, to us. We'll uh, kick off the show tonight uh, with a letter that uh, is coming into us from Darlene. Darlene writes in, this is a story, one of many, told to me by my mother as I was growing up. And whether my mother was uh, about 12 years old when this happened and she described the farmland on which they lived and how far it was from her grandparents' property. They were separated by a little lake and how they would walk around uh, into uh, get to one another's home to the point where they made a beaten path. My mother went on to describe her relationship with her grandparents and describe her grandpa with such detail, his voice, his personality, and mainly his temper. He was one you didn't want to mess with and for some reason did not like my grandfather, her dad at all. They never got along. My grandfather did what he did uh, did what he could to steer clear of uh, his father-in-law's path well one day my mom's grandfather passed away she says they were sad to hear of his passing but did admit it was a slight relief to those who feared him then a few days uh, after his funeral they decided to split up his belongings my mother said in those days you didn't waste anything if someone could use it then so be it and just like that it was all divided among family and for uh, some, it was like Christmas came early. My grandfather received some of his tools his father-in-law once used, but was a bit hesitant about bringing them home. He felt unsettled about it in a way, but wouldn't say why, but we knew why. We knew it was because of the relationship they had, or shall we say lack of, but he brought them home anyway, placed them in the shed by the barn. It was the very first night the tools spent in the shed that things started to happen around the farm. My mother said they could hear heavy footsteps outside coming down the path from her grandma's house. The footsteps sounded familiar. It sounded like their grandfather used to make when he'd make his way to their place, but the footsteps were never pleasant to hear. They continued to listen for them, and 
uh, then ran to the window where the footsteps would be going past, but nothing went by that they could see. Yet, they would still continue to hear the footsteps. These footsteps went all the way to the shed where my grandfather kept all his tools, and then my mom said they could hear rattling and banging sounds coming from the tool shed. Then the footsteps would proceed back up the path. This happened every night for a few weeks. We even heard someone knock on our door a couple of times, but when we opened the door, no one was there. My mom just said an eerie, had a, just had an eerie feeling that left your hair standing up on your neck. After a while, my grandfather decided to return the tools to his mother-in-law and told her he didn't feel right about having them, considering the father-in-law didn't really like him or get along with him. She tried to insist he kept them, but my grandmother, my grandfather's mind was made up. He later told my mom he should have went with his gut feeling about not accepting the tools. Well, it turns out that after he returned them, the footsteps went away and the noises from the shed went away as well. We no longer felt as if we did something wrong, my mother said, and then she went on to say that some people can be so hateful in life that they became hateful in death as well, but by choice. She said, I feel my grandfather chose to carry a grudge well into the next life and was so adamant about it that it was palpable to the living. She also said that there were a few more family members who refused to keep his belongings around their homes as well and tried to return them or gave them to someone else. I remember the story as if I was on that farm from every footstep to every noise to everyone's reaction to hearing footsteps, yet not seeing who was making them still sends shivers down my spine. As you can see, I grew up in a home where I felt comfortable talking about these things, even though my mother was never allowed to talk of such things as ghosts or hauntings. It was just not heard of back then. People pretty much kept to themselves. P.S. I too believe we should choose who we are uh, in the afterlife, just as we choose who we are now. The story seemed to make that clear to me. My mother told me of other things that happened, but I'll save that for another time. Thanks. You're both epic story readers. Love your show. So, Grandpa wanted his tools to stay where he wanted them to stay. Grandpa was just a dick. Hey, that's not nice. He may not have been the nicest person, but we don't know. Which, that that's what it means. It does <laughs> not. Anyway. Well, I mean, it, it just sounds like if you can't get over your petty not liking someone and real life i mean in the afterlife can you at least go okay moving on <laughs> you know it, it, fine if you don't like the person then just don't don't bother them just move on yeah find something else that pleases you well maybe his attachment to his tools was greater than his dislike for his son-in-law Maybe his likeness of his tools was greater than that of his son-in-law. He would pick his tools over his son-in-law. That's what I just said. Sure, sure, Maybe his yeah. attachment to his okay, tools sure, sure, was yeah. greater than his dislike for sure. his son-in-law. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And so that might have really not so much burned him that his son-in-law got something, but maybe it was that it was that that he got. I see. Because I know that, at least in my family, we have some tools that belong to my great great grandfather okay. and they've been passed down sure there's like two things that are left that are usable but it's been one of those things that is kind of kind of a prized possession in our family just because it is old sure and it was used every day and mm -hmm. anyway i think my dad would probably be unhappy if that fell into the wrong hands sure. so i can see the attachment there so if if they got like his juice glasses you're saying it probably wouldn't be the haunting. It's more so the fact that it was the tools. I'm thinking maybe so. Okay. I wonder what the other items were, though. Because she did mention that, that some other items other folks had gotten, and they were having issues and trying to return them, too. That's true. I didn't remember that. So was there... And that also then puts you into the, the question of, can you be in more than one place at one time if you're a ghost? See, this is where I just kind of go back to maybe he was just kind of a dick because he's constant, he's, he's going to all these people <laughs> just be, making life miserable and kind of freaking them out because they got the stuff that he can't use anymore even though he's dead. Yeah. So like, at what point you just go, let it go. Just, okay, you didn't like people when you were alive. Fine, you're not here anymore. You know, I, I, I don't know. Misery just kind of breeds misery sometimes, and some people, I guess, just never 
move on from it. That'd be horrible. Yeah, it would be horrible. Um, I would love to find out uh, what some of those other uh, other stories are. Thank you guys for writing in uh, and sharing that story with us. Our phone number is 855-853-4802. That's the phone number to call into Real Ghost Stories Online. Of course, you can always uh, just uh, call, write in as well on the website at realghoststoriesonline.com. Uh, if, of course, if you like the show, be sure to tell a friend about it verbally. Uh, telepathically or Facebook or Twitter work as well. Pinterest does too. Your support is what keeps our show alive and keeps it going. Audrey writes in, hi, Tony and Jenny. I'm Audrey from California and I love the show. I have my own story to tell and have the preface uh, to preface it by saying that my family is very religious and I feel like that has opened the door to something much bigger. Anyway, when I was a kid, maybe six or seven, I would love to spend time uh, with my aunt pronounced as aunt. Remember, we've had that discussion. I used to say, I, I always say aunt for whatever reason on the show. I'm saying aunt because I, I, I think I, I always felt that aunt was the informal wrong way of saying something, but I said it anyway, because that's how everyone in my family said it. Okay. And I think I'm just saying aunt because I felt that that was more of the proper way, but it I don't know. Does it make you sound smarter? Does it not? No, no, not one of those. Not, no. not like dragon versus dragon. That's just you saying your A is wrong. <laughs> That's just my, yeah. Flag, flag. We'll work on your A sounds. <laughs> we'll get through all the vowels eventually. I can't wait. C spot run. Um, okay, can I just say ant then when that comes up? I think that's what she wants. Okay. One of the things I would do is sleep over almost every Friday and wake up to every morning. Well, one of these Fridays changed me. It was bedtime. I was tucked into the guest bedroom. I was pushed up long ways against the wall. My aunt came in. We said our nightly prayers, and she turned off the lights and went into her room. I went to sleep. At about midnight, I was awoken by something, and I looked up from my little spot on the bed. To my right stood a tall male figure. At the foot, of the, uh, the foot were two more figures, and in the hallway were two more. All five were completely black, and they did not feel good. I was so scared that I screamed for my aunt and turned on the lights. I told her what happened and she went around the entire room with holy water and prayed several prayers. Then she told me I'd be fine and we went back to our beds and slept. I woke up again, this time at three in the morning. I know it was three because I remember seeing the little red numbers on the digital clock. And those figures were back. This time, they pulled the bed away from the wall, and there were two men on either side of me moving the bed. I cried for my aunt again, and the men were gone. This time, she slept with me in the bed, and those figures never returned. I'm 24 now, and I can't sleep in the complete darkness or silence. I sleep with my laptop on, playing music, and it's the only way I can sleep. Even with my fiancé next to me, I still have to sleep with something to ease my nerves. Thank you for reading this, and I hope my story can help other people. I think that my enjoyment of spending the night at my aunt's house would be pretty much over. What if she made the best pancakes in the world, though? Would that be worth the five demons? No. <laughs> no, there's no pancakes that are going to outweigh five demons. What if it was like the Mulberry pancakes from Portlandia, where they waited in line for like half a day because they were just so amazing? Not even. <laughs> Are there <laughs> any things that you were afraid of as a child as far as sleep that you still have those habits? Like she's 24 uh -huh. and she's still having to kind of do things a certain way because of this event. I, I have certain things I need to fall asleep, but it's not based on fear. It's just based on a very active mind. Um, like I need to have something playing in the background, some sort of show uh -huh. at the least usually. And music doesn't really do it for me. I, I think I started with music a long time ago when I was like in junior high. Uh -huh. Um, and I, it was okay. That kind of worked. Um, then I discovered Art Bell and then it was pretty much, I listened to coast to coast for like the next 10 years. Um, and then got older and my bedtime no longer became midnight. It became earlier than that. So I was never staying up late enough to hear Art Bell. And then I married you and you refused to let me listen to it. Well, yeah. <laughs> so we just decided to do our own ghost show before bed because that's... <laughs> well, 
And I know that makes no sense at all, but <laughs> our listeners have to realize there's like good hour and a yeah. half to two hours that I spend after we do the show completely sure. trying to distract myself from all the things that we hear. Yeah. So it's different. Yeah. You got, I mean, but, uh, and, and really midnight, if I'm not asleep by midnight, it's a late night. Yeah. So it's not really even an option for me anymore. Um, so I would, you know, now it's like Frasier and uh, Walking Dead sometimes. Although Walking Dead gets a little noisy with the gunshots. Yeah. But uh, usually it's something semi-peaceful. I did Seinfeld for a while, Frasier, Cheers. But nothing out of fear. No, it was it was simple redundancy. And reruns are what I need to sleep. I need something that I know I've heard before. So I can just easily drift away from it. If it's like a brand new show, I'm not usually good at falling asleep to that because I'm more curious than I can be just passively falling out of to, off to sleep. Yeah. No, nothing out of fear. You? Uh, when I was little, for whatever reason, I developed this habit of always having a pillow lengthwise beside me. Mm -hmm. When I was sleeping alone in my bed, I had to have this pillow. And... For whatever reason, it made my six-year-old little mind feel more at ease, like I was protected on that side or whatever. Okay. And I kind of, I don't do it out of that reason, but I, I got to where as I got older, I started using that pillow like to, to throw an arm over or to help my back, you know? Sure. So I still, to some degree, do it, but not for that reason. Okay. I, I used to be very much afraid to keep my, have my arm or my leg hanging off the bed. Uh-huh. Not anymore. I can do it. And I don't do it. I, I would fall asleep and it's very uncomfortable. But I remember being a kid, like, really enjoying having an arm or a leg hanging off the bed, thinking, oh, that's so comfortable. But I'm afraid something's going to grab it, so I better put it back up. Now the fear's not there. It's just extremely uncomfortable to do, so I just don't do it. But that was something that was there for quite a while. I mean, probably into, like, even, you know, early teen years. Sure. But uh, no, I, I don't really have any any sleep fears uh other than looking in the mirror in the middle of the night okay that's that's all i got good to know that and you know sometimes i do i do somewhat believe that there's a uh a demon or something that's living underneath our bed but that's only on certain days of the week and okay <laughs> whatever only, you say. only if you say certain words in the right kind of Whatever. <laughs> uh, you did see when they ripped up our floor the other day, there was a Ouija board that was there uh, pentagram was not, on the, the base There was boards, no. nothing under there. <laughs> this has been a horrible, horrible joke to play. I would have been and I'm just mad at you of it right now. for so long. You would be on, no, I would be on the couch because you would be sleeping alone for the rest of our marriage. That would have been a horrible joke. If... Because you were in the other room and they're ripping up. Because we just put some new flooring in our bedroom. And it would have, when they ripped the carpet up, what I should have done is gone in there with this spray paint can and like painted like something on the ground. And I'm like, oh my God, you have to come see what they just found underneath the carpet. Ah! <laughs> horrible. I can't even tell that you. That would be horrible. The rain of wrath I would <laughs> come down upon you. You wouldn't laugh at all when I go, oh, just kidding. No. No, because then you permanently put a Ouija board on our yeah, underlayment. That's, yeah, that's true. You really can't get rid of that at that point. No. I would have been like, oh, I didn't think of that. No kidding. That's that second thought, right? <laughs> One thought's okay, but two's a, a struggle. That's a bit much, you know. 855-853-4802. Do you think there's ever contractor, like, We've talked about this kind of before. I forgot exactly how it was brought up. Where, um, gosh, what was it? Where there was like with someone involved in the manufacturing process of something. Do you recall this at all? Where they were finding that some things, like symbols and things, were put on some stuff. The bunk beds. The bunk beds. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I was just going to say, do you ever? Th this is a far stretch, but do you ever think that there's maybe? You know, when ha hauntings and stuff pop up in uh, you know, a lot of remodels and things of that nature. But is it ever a result of some contractor that maybe is dabbling in some wrong things that is, in fact, hiding some things like that? I mean, like 
putting a pentagram underneath flooring, underneath carpet. The owner never sees it or knows it for whatever ritualistic thing. I don't know. And I'm not trying to be sarcastic or making a joke here. I'm just saying, do you think it ever happens? And in, in cases like that, where suddenly out of nowhere, the haunting arises after some sort of remodel and they can't figure out why or what. Well, if you'd asked me a year ago, can a bunk bed be haunted because somebody at the factory put symbols in it that nobody ever saw? Mm -hmm. I would say no. And what kind of stupid ass idea is that? <laughs> so I'm going to be on the safe side and say anything's possible. Okay. Now, I would like to think that that's not something that's I'm sure it's not common. Yeah, but... But I just wonder, you know, I... I seriously doubt it. It's a perfect it. opportunity. Unless you are the asshole client from hell that makes the contractor rip stuff up like three times and redo it on their dime, then yeah. I'd be myself. If I had a customer like that, I'd be putting pentagrams all over their shit. But... <laughs> I don't I think... I can't wait till the reverse yourself person reverses that statement to hear what comes out of that. But I don't think that's something that happens hardly ever, if ever. Sure. Is that like the equivalency of a waiter spitting in your food? Pretty much. <laughs> the contractor putting satanic symbols underneath your laminate. Pretty much. 855-853-4802. Uh, Caroline writes, and first off, just want to say love you guys, love the show, and all, and I uh, love hearing all the stories uh, from other people and have had paranormal experiences. I wanted to write in for some time now about an experience I had in the spring of 2002. There have been several over the years, but uh, this uh, is one that I feel is significant because it essentially opened the door to the other experiences. Uh that I've been receptive to since. A little bit of background first. Like Jenny, I'm an empath. I apparently always have been, but did not realize this gift until listening to your show. I've always had an uncanny ability to sense others just by the shift in how the air and energy feels. I can pick up on hidden emotions and just know in, uh, in strength to, what's the word here? I'm in strictly or instinctively. Is that? No. Nope. It's your turn. <laughs> Intrinsically? In in close. Intrinsically. Yes. You got it. I knew I knew the word. I just couldn't think of it. You did graduate high school. I did. Okay. In Wisconsin. Uh-huh. When someone's going through a hard time, which subsequently makes me an easy dumping ground for everyone's problems. I'm currently researching the topic and finding ways to hone my abilities so social situations and crowded areas aren't so draining. But I digress. In the spring of 2002, I was closing out my senior year of high school when suddenly and unexpectedly, my stepfather died of a heart attack. He was in excellent health and only in his mid-40s, so you can imagine. It came as a shock to all of us, but it seemed to hit my mother and me the hardest, as I was the last to see him living, and my mother unfortunately found him just after he had died. I don't remember much of that night when we found out. I remember bits and pieces, as I'm sure is true for anyone who has gone through a traumatic experience. We were visited by several relatives and friends that evening while we were all in shock. Sometime around 9 or 10 at night was when everyone cleared out and the three of us girls, my mom, my younger sister, and I were faced with having to fall asleep on our own. We were lying on my stomach in my bed at the time. I had a loft bed about 5 to 6 feet off the ground. It was April and perpetually warm in my room, so the ceiling fan was spinning lazily trying to keep me cool. This detail will not seem random in a moment. I was lying there continually on the verge of tears gasping in those cry breaths as I dealt with what had happened. Suddenly, I felt cool air on my back, like someone was blowing air across me. As I felt the air traveling across my back, I instantly calmed and felt at peace. I was asleep within seconds, like it was going under some sort of fast-acting sedation. To say it was unusual would be an understatement. The ceiling fan comes into play here. The air that blew across was too cold to have been from that fan. Not only that, but it was too forceful, forceful, and it was at an angle that could never have been achieved by a ceiling fan. Almost as if someone was standing next to my bed. Remember, it's a loft bed about five to six feet up in the air, blowing air across me. The next morning, I told my mother and sister about the experience, and they each had one of their own to share. 
My sister fell asleep with her TV at regular volume. She said she remembered waking up in the middle of the night to see the TV on, when suddenly it turned off. The remote had not been near her, and she did not set a sleep timer on the television. She said she had heard the distinct click of a button on the front of the TV, like someone had been in the room and turned it off for her. Last, there was my mom. She slept out on the couch that night and woke up wrapped in a blanket like she had been tucked in. She asked us girls if we had been up and, uh, and put the blanket on her, but we had not. We pointed out that she could have half woken up and pulled it over her, but she said the way in which she'd been tucked in would have been impossible for her to do herself. The blanket had apparently been tucked securely around her arms and shoulders like someone else had done it. To this day, nearly 13 years later, we are convinced our experiences were him saying the goodbyes to us three girls he was robbed of with his untimely death. Thanks for taking the time to read this long story, and thanks for putting more stories like this out there in the world so those of us that do have those experiences don't feel like we're imagining things. You guys are awesome. I don't think you were imagining things at all. I no. think it was very much him coming back to say goodbye. It was probably a shock to you guys and him as well. Sure. So that was probably his way of kind of coming to grips with what had happened and doing something different for each one of you, which I find that interesting. We've had a couple of stories where the loved one has come back after an untimely death and kind of says goodbye to each of their family members in a separate way. Mm -hmm. So I think it just solidifies the, you know, the the notion of them coming back to say goodbye because they probably in life had, you know, something different they did for each one anyway. Sure. I mean, different relationships with the different people and being able to come back in a unique way to just kind of do something mm -hmm. to say goodbye. Yeah, that's that was a good story. It is. It's good to have a, a good one where a good ghost comes back, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. 855-853-4802. Uh, that's the number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. If you haven't already done so, please press that subscribe button, whatever platform it is you're listening to us on. That uh, ensures that you get all the episodes of our show sent directly to you uh, and uh, also helps us grow because that uh, tells those uh, those platforms that you listen to us on that, hey, people enjoy this show. We should, should uh, maybe suggest this to some other folks. So it helps us grow. Please uh, please do so if you would. Let's go to a call. Uh, this is uh, Kate in Michigan. Hi there, Brewskies. My name is Katie. I live in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And uh, when I was younger, I had my first, I guess, paranormal experience. Um, it wasn't technically mine. It was my neighbor's. Um, but to, to precurse the story, um, my neighbor was a house that was set back behind another house. There was a house in the front yard where there wasn't really a yard, and then there was a yard between the houses in the back, and then a smaller house behind that, which had a side yard. Um, the blue house, which was my neighbor's, was right next to our garage, so it was pretty far back in the yard. And I was really good friends with our neighbor. He took me fishing when I was younger, and. We played with the dogs, and it was just a really nice neighborly relationship. And uh, I was about, let's say, eight or nine, kind of free thinking, almost, as any kid would be. And uh, my neighbor, it was later in the evening, I think it was maybe six or seven, and uh, my neighbor came running over to our house, banging on our back door and saying, he saw something, he saw something. And we were just like, oh, it must be like a raccoon or something. Um, we've never been in his house, but we went into his house. And he told us there's no stairs to the basement, there's no stairs to the attic. He didn't, he didn't guess anything, he didn't want to know, it's just an old house. Um, a very small house. And he told us he saw a little girl in his house. And we were really confused, um, because we don't have, we didn't have any kids my age around. Um, so was, there was a little girl in his house. We asked her what she looked like, and it was a little girl, little blue dress. She had a doll. It was a little porcelain doll, and she just waved at him and walked to the back of his house, and he followed her, asking where she came from, if she needs help finding home, and she was gone. 
Um, he looked around, he looked in the cupboards, he looked under furniture, and then finally he was looking in a closet and found her little doll. And we didn't believe him until he showed us the doll. And this is like a man in his 30s. It was like a bachelor pad. Why the hell would he have a little porcelain doll? So that was my first paranormal experience when I was younger. Um, I have a couple more stories, so I'll probably call in another time. Um, I really love your show. I just recently got into watching and listening on YouTube, and uh, hopefully, if I get raised soon enough, I will become an EPP. So I hope you have a great day, night, whatever time of day it is for you guys. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for calling in and sharing that story with us. And uh, thank you in advance for uh, when you become an EPP. Uh, so what do you think of that? The house, uh, what strikes me is the weirdness of the house. Okay. Where there's no stairway to the upstairs or the downstairs. Yeah, but I'm wondering about the doll. Did she leave the doll and the doll stayed? Or did she come because the doll was there for an unknown reason since it was an old house there's a lot of weirdness going on in that house yeah sounds like it i couldn't imagine could you <laughs> i'd be very perplexed living in a house like that yeah i mean i, I there's, there's too many questions yeah why i, I don't like walled off areas i mean did he do that was that how the house I don't know. I don't know, but... Because at the beginning, it sounds like a neighborly, kind of a nice person, but... No, I don't think there's anything weird with him. No, I okay. think he sincerely freaked out by the sure. fact that there was this little girl in his house. Yeah, yeah. When there obviously shouldn't sure. be. There, he doesn't have children, doesn't know anybody that... I think there's, a, there's more to his house than he's aware of, and I don't know. I'd... I'm wondering if the doll is it. Sure. Once he started going through that closet and found that doll in there, who yeah. knows how long it had been there. Yeah. Creepy story. Mm-hmm. Thanks for calling in and uh, sharing that with us. Our phone number is 855-853-4802 to, uh, to call into Real Ghost Stories online. Samantha writes in, Hi, guys. I've called in before with my stories of a ghost that lives in my family's apartment sl uh, slushing me when I get... Uh, shushing me. <laughs> slushing me. Yeah. <laughs> shushing. Shushing me. And opening my bedroom door to check in on my little sister. I wanted to call with uh, more stories, but uh, when you live in a haunted place, the stories begin to pile up. So I wanted to write them in to uh, keep my thoughts in order. I think the ghosts in our home are starting to get more comfortable with us. My parents are religious and do not believe in ghosts at all. And I am somewhat empathetic, uh, so uh, or empathic rather. So I think that uh, might be a reason to uh, reach out to me first. Now, my sister started to experience things that despite her best efforts, my parents too. One day, my dad had uh, worked the night shift and was catching up on sleep. He walked into my and my sister's bedroom, sleepy-eyed, and asked if either of us had called him and woke him out of sleep. We hadn't and would have heard if anyone had called him since our room is right next to his. The next day, my mom came into the room and I was with my dad to ask him if he'd called her. He hadn't and someone would have had to call loudly for her to hear them from where we were. He and I hadn't heard anything. I smiled to myself a little, thinking that this was the ghost's way of reaching out to my parents and trying to get their acknowledgement. Around the same time, while my dad was still working nights and sleeping during the day, my mom and I were in the kitchen when we heard the bedroom door slowly creak open. It's been closed and securely shut so that my dad wouldn't be disrupted. Without my mom seeing, I went towards the door and said out loud, Hey, could you leave him alone? He worked last night and is trying to sleep. Slowly, the door closed on its own and clicked shut again. Thankfully, my dad slept through the whole thing. Another quick story. When you guys read my last story of the ghost shushing me, you asked, would you rather hear a ghost shush you, children laughing, or scream in the night? A few days before last Halloween, my parents went to a warehouse store and a few hours later, my sister and I heard a knock. I was so wrapped up in what I was doing that I thought she'd get it, but she let it go on. The first knock was a little tune. I think it's called shave and a haircut. And being that my dad uh, does this, I thought it was him. 
When I got to the door, though, no one was there. I checked the outside staircase, but hadn't heard footsteps in any direction. I brushed it off as a prank, since in an apartment building there are a lot of places for someone to hide. Later that night, while everyone else was asleep, I was up late working, because I run a business from home, when I heard a knock on my bedroom door. I froze up because I know what my parents' energy feels like, and didn't feel them on the other side of the door. It was unfamiliar, but also... What kind of playful, for lack of a better word, not blah, blah, blah. I can't talk tonight. Ma Malevolent? Malevolent! Okay. I don't know what it is. I don't know either. I was doing a lot of exercising today. Just not your brain muscle? It's not my brain muscle. Okay. As I started to walk towards the door, I heard children's laughter and little feet running away and disappearing down the hall. Part of me was scared, but part of me thought, those damn mischievous ghost kids. I was able to laugh it off. I guess a few ghost kids just wandered, uh, wanted in on the Halloween spirit. I love you guys in the show. So do our ghost roommates. Another long story. Post-college, trying to start a business doesn't leave much room to become an EPP yet, but I'll continue to support the show any way I can. And we'll try to call and write in again soon. Much love from New York. Okay, I want to hear about the ghost roommates and their yeah. their input or whether or not they listen to the show. <laughs> then we have more un or undead listeners. Wouldn't that be something? We already got one. I know. I wonder how many other ones we have that we just don't know about. So I think I would come back and want to participate in Halloween. I would love to come back and participate. I would be. I, it'd be great to be like the ghost at an abandoned house <laughs> that the kids are like being dared to go and knock on the door of. Yeah. I would make the light light up on the porch. Okay. I use a lot of my energy for that. So they thought, oh, this is a house I can trick or treat at. Okay. Because that's you know, the rule. Mm hmm. So they get the kids up to the porch. Then, then you can do all sorts of fun stuff. I think you'd use all your energy on that light and then you'd <laughs> just peter out. I'd you be wouldn't. like, Damn it, I can't do it. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to do anything else. I can't pronounce big words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm having a day where I just can't read big words. I don't, I don't know how I to help know. you with that. I don't know. Maybe, uh, I don't know. More of an edumacation. <laughs> Maybe. 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at uh, Real Ghost Stories Online. Rebecca writes in, I have an oldie but a goodie to share. This happened when I was 15 years old and living in my old hometown. One of my friends had a Ouija board. I know, I know, but we were kids and every now and then we'd bring it out and mess around with it. I usually thought my friend was moving in though because there was one spirit, I forget the name, that would always show up when we were together. Something happened the last time we played to make me change my mind. It was the last time I ever touched a Ouija board. There were three of us. We decided to do some backyard camping at my friend's house and were telling scary stories and messing around with the board. My friend had quite a bit of land, or rather her parents did, and we set up our tent a fair distance from the house. I don't recall exactly what came across while we were playing with the board, but at some point, we all got wigged out and put it down. We started singing silly songs like kids do to calm ourselves down and get rid of that eerie feeling. We were getting really rowdy, singing loudly and goofing off when I heard a voice whisper directly in my ear, Shut up. You can probably imagine that I was somewhat freaked out. In fact, I clapped my hands over my ears and curled up in a little ball for several minutes, which of course scared my friends to death. Eventually, I was able to tell them what happened, and we all fled the house and put the board away. Luckily, we knew better than to burn it. I haven't touched one since. I love the show, y'all. Oh, by the way... Yins is a term used around the Pittsburgh Northeastern Ohio area. Basically, it's the same meaning as y'all, except for being short for you all. It's short for you uns. You uns? Uh, I guess so. Okay. I know uns isn't a word. I think it was originally ones. Oh, you ones. Okay. okay. Thanks for everything, Rebecca. I've not heard that other than just, you know, when listeners have written in getting you to say it so how'd i do in my y'all there 
it, your y'all is fine, but I have no idea how you're doing on your yens. <laughs> I don't think we're ever going to be moving to the Ohio area, so I think I'll be okay. Never say never. That's true. I have nothing against the Ohio area. I just have... I don't know. <laughs> you probably never imagined you'd end up in Wichita, Kansas either. No, I didn't. But I think that portion of my life for like moving around the country uh, for job reasons is done. Yeah. So I, I think I, I'm a little bit more control over that thing now. So hopefully someday we'll have a place where you have to say y'all. On Not a cool with basis. that. Now I'm fine with that. I'm fine with, with doing the Texas thing. Yeah. And that looks fun. Um, and everyone looks pretty friendly. It actually, it, it looks a lot, I mean, it, I, I shouldn't say physically looks, but in some ways it does. There's some of the areas that we've seen on some of the, the shows we've been watching of certain areas we're, we're liking to look at uh, someday. Uh, nature, trees, kind of Wisconsin-like, but warmer. Um... More trees than here, anyway. Yeah, more trees than, more trees than here. Sure. But, I don't know. It's, it's Is there hills different. in uh, some of these areas? Yeah, it's called the hill country. Hey, I love hills. Yeah, the middle Water. part of the state. So maybe someday we'll have our, our winters down there. Yeah. Is there like lakes and stuff too? Yes, there's lakes. Okay. There's lakes and trees and hills. I'm fine with... with that. There's animals too. <laughs> if, we, if we were to ever go there and live there at some point in our life, do I ever... Am I always a Wisconsinite? Can I have like half... Can I become somewhat Texan or am I never quite a Texan because I'm not from Texas? Can I get like adopted in for a little while? You can become a Texan, but you're not going to be a native Texan because you're sure. not born there. Well, I'm fine with that. I understand that. Yeah. And I will always have that on you. They Sorry. can adopt you up north, you know, for, for being mm -hmm. a Wisconsinite or wherever it ends up being that there's a little place. <laughs> You know, I don't know, uh, I don't, but I, 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 I'm really starting to like the idea of, of further south and warmer weather consistently. <laughs> At least you're in the winter. Yeah, yeah. Be in there's. Uh, we'll be one of those old couples that travels down south for the winter. And does our ghost show from a mobile home or something in the middle of the desert <laughs> in Arizona, in uh, uh, the kingdom of Nye. <laughs> anyway, which is where uh, Art. Well, let's rent his old trailer. Yeah. What if he, I think he still lives there. I don't know. For, uh, Pahrump. Pahrump, Nevada. What? That's where he lives. Pahrump. I'm not it's going to any place. That Very you... tiny. No. Like they're most known for like aliens <laughs> stuff. No, it doesn't look very scenic. It's in the middle of a desert. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Kara writes in, my uh, grandma died in 2012, a few days after my 24th birthday, which is one of the reasons why I'm not so excited for my birthdays anymore. It's a sad thing to lose a loved one, but we were also very lucky, lucky to have him in our lives. And he also had a very long, happy and healthy life. He left us at the age of 95. A few days later after his wake, we went to go to visit where he was going to be put to rest later on in the day. Was glad to see it had a beautiful view of the valley and the bay on both sides from his final resting place on top of a hill at the cemetery. After seeing where he was going to be laid to rest, his kids, my two uncles and my mom, as well as my grandma, decided to look around at one of the mausoleums for some reason. I went with them because I wanted to keep an eye on my grandpa and my grandma to make sure she was okay. I knew she'd be able to handle herself, but I wanted to be sure. We'd been in the mausoleum for maybe a little over 30 minutes when I started to get a weird feeling. The longer I was there, the worse it got. I looked around at my family, at the others in the mausoleum. Everyone seemed perfectly fine, and it was just me. I was trying to stick it out so I could be with my family. Worked for a few minutes, but then it got to the point where I felt like I was about to cry and hyperventilate. I then told my mom that I would wait for them outside and head off. As soon as I get out of the building, uh, as in the first few uh, two steps out of the door, I instantly felt better like nothing happened at all. I was confused, but there was nothing I could do about it. So I just sat down, pulled out my phone to have something to do until my family came out. Another weird thing is that I was on my phone for several minutes and it worked perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden it just started to act up, which was unusual for that phone since there was never anything wrong with it until that moment. I restarted the phone, thinking maybe I had a phone on too long or something, but even that didn't work. My phone didn't start working until my family came out. We were walking away from the building. 
Not sure what happened or if it was a ghost experience or anything, but it was still weird just the same. Anyway, I write this. I write this as I'm uh, walking back to my car from visiting my grandpa since it's pretty much the anniversary of his passing. So please excuse me if anything I wrote sounds kind of off or isn't written correctly. I miss my grandpa, but I know he's in a better place now. Anyway, I know you guys hear it a lot, but I'll say it again. Love the show. Thank you for everything you guys do. You guys are amazing. Okay, I wonder if it was just too much of one type of energy there, or if there was something there actually messing with her. I wonder if it was some. Do you, do you think it was something that was personal to them, or just like the area they happened to be in it? I don't know. I It's hard, to, especially in a place like a mausoleum, to say, well, maybe it was this or maybe it was that, because it could be just... It could be residual negative energy from people mourning their lost loved ones. It could be something haunting there that just likes to toy with people. It could be the sadness, you know, from the loss of a loved one. It's hard to say. I think the worst possible office you could ever have anywhere in the world would be in a mausoleum. Yeah. I say this because I used to go play in the mausoleum that was close to my house. And there's always uh, someone there working in the office because it was a, a business. You know, they ran the, the cemetery and the mausoleum that was in the cemetery. Uh, this is this is the non-spooky cemetery. This is the one that I used to ride bikes around, big flat cemetery at the end of the road there. It's where my grandma is. Yeah. And um, the, uh, the inside mausoleum, the one where that's indoors. Did you ever go in there with me? I did. Okay. Um, Back in the day, um, it was carpeted in, uh, it was just spooky. Um, and it was a fairly new building, but it was spooky. It was like all red velvet. Okay. Very dark, like the whole thing. And now it's a lot brighter, which I was kind of surprised by when we got a chance to see it not that long ago. Um, it's a little cheerier now, I guess, for as cheery as a mausoleum is going to get. Um, but back then it was red velvet everywhere. It almost looked like something out of... Uh, like Scarface or something where you walk into like this really dark room and there's these really dark lights and you're just expecting him to be sitting there at the end with a, a large desk and a pile of coke hey, holding onto a gun with these bodies all around. But uh, it was creepy. Uh -huh. um, and even now they, they brighten it up. It's a very non-dark place. But... I don't know, there's weird energy in that place. I I, I I can't ever put my finger on it. I don't know why, but there's always a very distinct feeling in a mausoleum, and I can't tell you what it is, but even I feel it, and okay. it's weird. I and don't I don't get on the outside one. I don't mean to interrupt you. I, I just want to say I don't get it on the outside, only on the interior ones. Uh-huh. Okay. What do you think? Do you get any feelings? I don't like them, but I don't... I wasn't getting super creeped out when I was there. No, I, I don't know if it's creeped out. I don't... It's just a weird uneasiness. And it's not like I'm scared to be in there. I don't know. I, I just... And that's where I bring up the offices is I know people have to go in there and work every single day. And I couldn't do that yeah. in that place. I don't know what it is. Because I'm fine with like walking around the outside ones that don't have a roof over mm -hmm. head. And they're lined walls just as you would on the inside ones. I don't know if it's feeling more trapped by these giant rock walls or if the energy is more contained on an indoor level with all that rock. I don't, I don't know. I, I just... I, I don't know. Am I the only one who got a weird feeling in that place? Maybe it just goes back to my childhood and just the... It could be that. I, know, I always felt odd inside of an indoor mausoleum. But not a cemetery. Okay. I'm fine with those. 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to uh, Miguel. Hey, Tony and Jenny. This is Miguel from Huntsville, Alabama. I called earlier, but I think my call might have gotten cut short. My wife called me, but uh, I figured I went ahead and i go ahead and retell the story. Um, Y'all have been talking about the, the theory um, talking when it's not supposed to and I know y'all kind of debunked it, and it does some stuff when you have it plugged in. Uh, one night, my wife and I just finished watching a movie, and um, we just settled down. We were doing a little bit of reading uh, before we were going to bed, 
and my phone had the Siri come up and it said something about a scary man in the corner and then it asked me if I wanted to search Google for it because it couldn't find anything on my phone and my wife and I just looked at each other our eyes got real big and she was kind of speechless and I just went ahead and grabbed my phone opened it up so I could turn it off and we went ahead and left the apartment because we did not want to be there not knowing what's going on um so every now and then you kind of get a funny feeling like you're being watched and it's just that general creepy feeling like it's always in the living room and you can't you can't walk by that room without looking at it like you just feel like there's something there watching you um we're leaving pretty soon because I, I can't really take it like it it's it, it's a weird feeling I don't it, I, I don't feel comfortable at all our lease comes up here in a little while so we'll be finding a new place um and then I've got another story for y'all uh, my wife and I just recently had a new baby boy and when he was about two weeks old we were still adjusting to the whole waking up every couple hours and uh, having to feed him and change the diaper and my wife and I were working in shifts up, up until she started to come down with pneumonia so I pretty much just took over everything myself and let her sleep the night through so she could get better um, but there's one night I just gotten off of work and I worked both my jobs that day and it was a really long day really tired and finally fell asleep right around like one in the morning um, there like clockwork two hours later he starts making his noises and crying because I know he's hungry and it wasn't too loud just you could tell like he was just like starting to stir and wake up a little bit so I figured I might just have a couple more minutes to, to catch a little bit of shut eye before he really got hungry and uh, right when I started closing my eyes I started to do doze off again uh, the bed shook real hard and I kind of like jolted upright and looked around. There's nobody there. My wife was still asleep. And uh, I don't know, I think it might have been something telling me that I need to get up and go feed my son and make sure that he had everything taken care of. Uh, who knows? Uh, definitely not in the area around here where we'd have like earthquakes or anything that that it do that uh we do have like the redstone arsenal around here where they do blow stuff up but i was a little bit away from the arsenal so there is no way that that uh, that would have even been it but i'll call back because i've got plenty of other stories to tell y'all love what you're doing with the show um tony i love your trailer park boys references everything with the rakins and everything i love it and jenny you're keeping him in keeping him at a pretty level, so y'all are doing a good job of love it all. And take it easy. Bye. Well, thank you for your call. I've had a kind of a similar experience where I'm almost asleep, and then for whatever reason I shake awake, and I don't know if it's me feeling like the bed's shaking or if I'm just shaking. It's Have you. you. Ever... I, I do the same thing. Okay. I think it's like, it's kind of that state where, you know, it's half asleep, half awake. I mean, I think it's, it's, you're verging on the area of where you could go into sleep paralysis. If you just happen to open your eyes right at the right time and you're right in that state. Uh huh. Cause your body is physically, it's flipping the switch of, uh, telling your feet not to run if you're running or walk or whatever, but it's. You know, it's just flipping it right at that time. Uh huh. So that's why you stop suddenly, but you're starting to do it because that that switch has not been quite flipped off yet. Okay. And you know, it's like when you you have a battery operated something, mm -hmm. and you take the batteries out, but usually if you flip it on for one second, it'll still turn back on with yeah. the residual juice that's there. That's kind of what your body is doing at that second. Okay. You know, the batteries have been removed. It's still that little thing. Sure. So I kind of enjoy that. Really? <laughs> it's kind of neat sometimes. That's weird. 
you'd probably be the one person that would think sleep paralysis was a cool experience. <laughs> hey, I had it once, and I was freaked out. Oh, that's right. So it was never like, hey, hey. <laughs> that was more very disturbing. But uh, it'd be interesting now if it ever happened, just because I have so much more knowledge about it, and I didn't know what the hell it was back then. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how I would handle it today. Just having, you know, if it were to happen again, if I would kind of be like, ah. Yeah. Like, I'm the person who enjoys nightmares sometimes when I know I'm dreaming. Right. So I'm like, I can totally screw with everything right now. <laughs> so, I don't know. It'd be interesting. 855-853-4802 is a phone number to call into Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost story with us. We would absolutely love to hear it. So feel free to call in and share it anytime you like. If you're not an EPP yet, please sign up. Be an extra podcast person and uh, you'll get the brand new episode that comes out tomorrow so uh, check that out and instantly when you sign up you'll get uh, all of uh, you get last week's uh, EPP episode and all the ones from the past so 21 episodes coming to you instantly right now uh, the second you sign up at realghoststoriesonline.com so for Jenny Bruski I'm Tony Bruski thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online